Wormhole is probably gonna have one of the premier crypto airdrops of 2024. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step exactly what you need to do to qualify. For starters, what actually is the size of the opportunity? Well, Wormhole is pretty massive. It has a huge amount of funding from some of the largest players in the industry, including Coinbase Ventures. And in November, 2023, so just a couple of months ago, they raised $225 million. So this is right up there with some of the largest players in the crypto space when it comes to the amount of funding that they have. And usually that directly correlates to a larger airdrop. So now let's talk about what you need to do to actually get your portion of this. Now, the thing about Wormhole is that it's an interoperability protocol and it powers transactions and bridging between different networks and even different blockchains. So the general idea to qualify for this airdrop is to bridge between different chains as often as you can or at least as often as you can afford to and then the more that you bridge in terms of the value or the volume of those transactions the better off you'll be and if you can hit different bridge applications in different unique weeks and months then that is going to help you qualify as well because in previous airdrops we've seen the number of transactions you make in distinct weeks or months actually helps you qualify. So if Wormhole says you had to have bridged in six different months or 10 different distinct weeks, then you want to try and hit as many of those criteria as you can. And the more that you can move in terms of value, the better. So I'm gonna show you three examples of different bridge applications that you can use for Wormhole right now. And that's gonna be the Portal Bridge, Merkley's Bridge, and Mayan Swaps Bridge. But there's other applications that you can use as well that interact with Wormhole. So since I'm on Mine Finance, let's just start with this one. And this is a bridge that you can use to swap between these different networks, but also Solana, which is a completely different blockchain. It's not even EVM compatible. So the way that Mayan Finance Bridge works is that you select the network you wanna send from. I don't recommend using Ethereum mainnet because the transaction fees are just gonna be way too expensive. Then you select the asset that you want to send. So let's send some ETH. And then you select the two network and you select which token you want to receive on the other end. So for the purposes of this, let's send to Polygon and let's receive some USDC on the other end. So I'm gonna bridge 0.25 ETH, which is about $577. And you'll notice that there is a little bit of slippage. So on the other end, I'm going to receive 574. So you are spending a little bit of money each time you make one of these transactions and you have to factor that in. That's basically the sunk cost of trying to farm this airdrop and the goal is that we're going to 10x what we spend in gas fees or even more than that in the amount of the airdrop that we get. So if you click on this button here, you can open it up and see the actual details. So I'm taking a $2 relayer fee and there's a tiny amount of slippage potentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm this transaction. I'm gonna hit swap and then I'm gonna hit confirm swap and it will pop up in your wallet asking you to confirm the transaction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit confirm. Now that transaction wasn't actually that convenient. It took about 20 minutes plus for it to show up on Polygon. And normally if I'm bridging from Arbitrum to Polygon, that should go through in like a minute. So I wouldn't necessarily say that mine swap is the most time efficient way to bridge between different chains. Although it's definitely useful if you're trying to send tokens to and from Solana. Let's talk about some of the other bridges you can use. So Merkley is a great one because it's actually multifunctional. So you can actually use Merkley to interact with Layer Zero, Wormhole, and Polyhedra. So you just need to select which one you want to send on. Uh, we're gonna use the Wormhole protocol for this video, obviously. So let's talk about the WNFTs first. What these transactions are gonna do is basically mint a generic NFT and then you're gonna be able to bridge it to one of these different networks. So you can select which network you wanna send from and to and then just hit mint and bridge. This is basically burning money to try and farm this airdrop because these NFTs are not actually worth anything but it's not too expensive. So let's send one from Arbitrum to base. I'm gonna hit mint and it will pop up in my wallet. So this is gonna cost me 93 cents in total, 70 cents to mint the NFT. And then the gas fee for the transaction is 23 cents. So let's confirm that transaction. And that goes through and the next step is to bridge it. And the bridge is gonna cost about $4.33. So this is not something that you're going to want to spam too much, to be honest. I completed that transaction. It's actually a little bit cheaper, I think, if you bridge from the Binance Smart Chain. So let's try one from BNB to Polygon. Uh, I'm gonna hit Mint. It's gonna ask me to change in my wallet. So the Mint fee on the Binance Chain is 66 cents in total. And the bridge fee is, yeah, a lot cheaper. So I burned actually way more money than I should have on the Arbitrum Chain. And if you wanna get cheap interactions with the WNFT wormhole bridge, 
I recommend doing Binance Chain to Polygon or something similar. You can check to see which ones are cheaper, but this is a lot cheaper than the Arbitrum bridge that I just did. So let's confirm that transaction. So that's already three interactions with the wormhole protocol in the last couple of minutes. And the final bridge that I'm gonna show you how to use is the portal bridge, which you definitely have to interact with if you're trying to hit the wormhole airdrop. Now you can send different assets to and from all of these different networks, including Solana, as well as Say, Algorand, Avalanche is in here as well. So there's lots of different options. Now for this tutorial, I'm just gonna do a basic base to optimism transfer. But if you're sending tokens to and from Solana, then you need to connect your Solana wallet instead of your EVM wallet. And you can also use the Mayan swap to transfer to and from Solana, which I have done a previous video about. However, if you're bridging USDC, I recommend using this right here, which is specifically the USDC bridge. It will be a little bit cheaper. Anyways, back to the portal token bridge. So I've selected base as my sending network. So let's bridge. 0.25 ETH. Okay, so I actually switched my route from base to Arbitrum and Optimism because the base transfer limit for the day was hit and it said it was going to take 24 hours. So instead of doing that, let's send 0.15 ETH from Arbitrum to Optimism. And if we scroll down here, we can see what the actual price impact of this is going to be. So I'm sending 0.15 and I'm going to receive 0.149. So you do take a small hit. There's transaction fees for this, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve this transaction and confirm it in my wallet. Okay, so now this is gonna take a few minutes to go through as well, but already in this video, we've hit a number of different applications and we've interacted with the wormhole protocol multiple times on the portal bridge, on Merkley's ONFT bridge and on Mayan Finance's uh, swap feature. So I wanna keep this relatively short, so I'll leave it at that, but I'll throw links to all this stuff down below and I'll also put some other different applications you can use to interact with if you're trying to hit the wormhole airdrop and just the more that you transact and the more value and volume that you do, obviously the better off you'll be. So hopefully you found this little tutorial helpful and have a great day. This is why I can never sell my WEN tokens.